Now my way of driving the car is dependent on the conditions. If it's safe to do so, I prefer to use autopilot as much as I can. And that's why I think it will be good for you to come along to the journey to see what Tesla autopilot is capable of doing. And I'm driving from one side of the town to the other side of the town, but I'll share my uh, tips and tricks while we are going ahead with the drive. And in my two years of owning the Tesla Model 3, I believe this is the most useful feature of the car that you don't have to worry too much about actually driving the car in especially freeway conditions. I got to wait for the car on the right in Australia, so in the roundabout situation, you got to give way to the right, uh, right on the roundabout. So if someone's on your right, you have to give way. So moving ahead with the drive. Currently in this situation, I know there's going to be breakers around, so I don't put the car on cruise. And with the recent updates, the cruise can actually detect if there's a turn coming ahead but obviously it wouldn't be able to detect the speed breakers and that's why I still have to manually drive it in this stretch but I'll show you what I mean so at this stage it would just keep on accelerating to the speed limit which is 40 kilometers per hour and hence I have to break it down and there's another thing if the 40 max is not available which means you won't be able to put the car on cruise so basically what that means is it's the speed limit of the road and if that limit does have a light gray sort of uh, icon or information there then it means you can put the car on cruise and if the car detects the speed limit but there's no lanes you won't get this signal which is uh, the autopilot signal so you can put it on cruise by hitting the stock once and now I have to manually brake it so I can take the roundabout safely so the the car would be able to handle these situations well even now and as you can see it detects there's a car in front of us and the good part about uh, tesla's autopilot or cruise control is like there's a natural progression in the way it breaks with the byd it actually uh, keeps on going and then pushes hard on the brake which is not the way i prefer to drive I, if i know i'm going to slow down the speed should start reducing and tesla is quite good at that so it feels quite natural the other could thing about Tesla's autopilot or cruise control is right now it's on cruise because uh, the steering is not blue but this icon is blue which means it is on cruise if I double tap then there's gonna be two things that change the steering wheel icon becomes blue as well as the lane markings become blue <coughs> which indicates we are currently on autopilot and the good part about Tesla autopilot is it actually picks up the speed when the car in front of you moves with other systems like in BYD, even if you've had it on the cruise or traffic assist system, after three seconds, it just disengages. So you have two options. Either you can push the accelerator in that scenario or push a button to reactivate the system. But with Tesla, it detects the cars moving and it's gonna move on its own, which is quite good and intuitive. But that's another thing it stops way behind the other car and it doesn't detect that it's a traffic situation so in this case i just pushed the accelerator a bit moved it forward without taking it off the cruise control so this is to show that tesla's cameras are detecting a lot more movement around us and it can actually detect a lot of cars front and back especially on the sides and i believe it's been improving uh, since we actually bought the car because I just realized that 
earlier it wasn't showing that many cars at the back side of the cameras it wasn't detecting more than two cars like when we got the car initially but right now it seems that there's a lot more options Now the distance I like to keep away from the front of the car is uh, 4 or 3 depending on if the traffic's moving freely but then maybe 4 if there's too much traffic I prefer at 3 and that uh, determines how far the car would place itself when driving but ideally I think 3 is the perfect distance for me and it's been working fine. And as you can see, the car is still on cruise control. And it can handle certain situations where the car is in front of you better than if there's no car in front, because in that case, it would read the lines on the road. And since they uh, are different when you are in a suburban environment, sometimes the car can detect the lanes going in the wrong direction. What I mean by that is, look at this situation where the lanes were curving if there was no car in front of me, the car would have, uh, I believe, given that decision a bit more time to make, that you have to go straight or follow the lane. And I've caught myself going in the direction of the other lane, and I have to manually take over in certain scenarios where uh, there's no car in front, and that's why you always have to be cautious while using this system, especially on suburban environments. But as you can see, I've not taken it off the cruise control or autopilot yet in the last uh, couple of minutes. And it can handle most of the scenario as well. But I know this lane is merging and there's going to be one lane. So in that case, I have to do uh, the acceleration pull if I want to go ahead of the car in the left or I have to reduce the speed if I want them to be in front. But overall, I think the cruise control is better when you are trying to use in these sort of scenarios. So let me put it on cruise. So there's multiple ways you can remove the autopilot. The way I would do right now is pull this stock up that disengages any sort of systems then since we are stopped just push it down once that will allow you to switch on the cruise control and all that changes from the autopilot is you gotta take control of the steering wheel rest of the system remains the same the car is going to slow down when the car in front of you slows down it's going to move and uh, pick up the pace when the car in front of you goes so you can actually if you like driving, then maybe this is a midway solution for you. You don't have to push the acceleration or brake, but you still got to control the steering wheel, which is good enough at tricky situations like these ones where there's lane merges and other things happening around you. And especially for suburban environments where there would be car parked on your left and it's a single lane with not clear lane markings, like the stretch that's coming ahead that's quite tricky for autopilot and i usually take the car off autopilot in these scenarios so right now it was fine the car in front of us had enough space for it to go forward and this is what i mean now there's a car in front and the car thought that they are in our way so it tried to slow down you can call it phantom braking but the solution around it is you keep a very light touch on the acceleration and the car would continue putting a light touch on this uh, acceleration pedal you are just letting the car know that you know that it is safe to go forward and if I don't do it it's gonna slam on brakes in situations where it's uh, it detects that the car on left is actually on the road and if you look at the scenario it's it's quite tricky for even us to drive on so for the autopilot or cruise control to detect it that way that's 
not not such a big deal and you can just push the accelerator just a bit to allow the car to move forward and by doing that it allows me not to worry about uh, keep pushing the accelerator pedal or get, uh, getting the car off the cruise control and it drives fine for me but I'm always ready to handle the car in a safer way by either braking when it's needed or pushing accelerator or even turning it from the away of the other car which are parked on the left side so it handles uh, the cruise control handles it well but there could be phantom braking right and that's normal for such tricky situations if you want you can drive manually not manually without the aids of cruise control or autopilot in such situations and can only resort to autopilot for freeways but whenever there's lane marking are there and they are clear enough I don't mind using the autopilot but you just have to be extra cautious around it and which is not such a big deal for me yet right now that's too much gap between me and the car in front of us so I just push the accelerator a bit and that doesn't take the car off the cruise control it just allows you to move forward and now the car is going to pick up the speed automatically which is good and it's uh, this this uh, part is quite natural like it allows the car to move forward it doesn't jerk uh, around in the sense of like it's not abrupt it's uh, quite linear when it's accelerating <clears throat> now uh, when you push the indicator button it's gonna give you the camera feedback towards the left now this is a tricky situation where there's a giveaway I might have to take the car off the cruise control depending on if there are cars on the left but since it's giveaway I'm under 40 kilometers an hour let's go and put the car on autopilot now now this stretch is fine for the car to handle on autopilot now I don't have to uh, push any button until uh, unless I see there's no car in front of me and there's going to be tricky lane markings on the road the car doesn't need any input from me at this stage and it's maintaining the distance fine I can reduce the distance to let's say two and you would see that it's going to move closer to that car but just to be on the safer side I still keep it at three or four and now at, at these scenarios where there's people on the left side and there's car parked the car can actually think they would be walking in the way of you driving so you have to be cautious and be ready to either hit the accelerator just a bit to let the car know that uh, they are minding their own business and you don't have to worry or brake because at times you would feel the phantom brake and that could be dangerous in these scenarios if the car suddenly brakes and there's a car driving uh, right behind you because especially in Queensland and Victoria that's what I've felt I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same scenario all over Australia where people for whatever reason like to tailgate but in those scenarios if the car phantom brakes it could be quite dangerous for the car and can cause accidents so in that case just a light tap on the acceleration pedal would be enough to resort to normal driving and you can just let the car know that don't worry about the pedestrians they're not coming in your way And I think that's this is one of the reasons for many autopilot accidents. In my personal opinion, that's uh, what I, what could happen. Like if you're not familiar with your autopilot system, how to operate it well, then it could happen that the car is on autopilot. Someone comes on your way, the car starts to uh, brake, and in panic mode you hit accelerator and not the brake and that's allowing the car to override the safety systems because you're saying that it's safe to do so don't worry about it 
So end of the day, you, you are in control of your car. So the car can give you warnings. Sometimes they could be like phantom braking or fake warnings, but that's where you got to push the acceleration or brake to decide you want to go ahead or you want to brake. Right now, no input required. The speed is 70. Currently, I'm driving on 60 because when I turned on the cruise control, it was on 60. So I could have taken it to 70, but I know there's going to be a speed limit of uh, 60 soon. And the car actually took it off cruise control automatically because I was holding the steering wheel too firmly. And the other way to take it off the cruise control is if you indicate and you move the steering wheel to left or right, then the car knows that you want to turn and it allows you to actually uh, go off the autopilot system and go on cruise control. And if you don't indicate and you just try to turn, then it, it's a bit of a forceful maneuver. Like the car would try to get you back on the track in the same uh, lane. Now, in this scenario, I saw that car coming, so I had to push the brake pedal. And now it's give way, so I can just go ahead. Now, I know the car is uh, gonna move on the right, and I just pushed once for autopilot. Uh, sorry, I pushed it once for cruise control because I know I'm gonna be merging soon. So I push the left stock to indicate that I want to go towards the right and merge in the lane. Now here I usually prefer to use the acceleration pedal to merge uh, properly. And once I'm in this second lane from the right, I'm good to go with autopilot, push the stock twice and you're good to go. And now you would see that how seamless the system is when it comes to driving on a freeway. It would barely need my input until unless I want to move towards right lane to take uh, overtake from the car in front of us. It would be fairly simple maneuver. The only thing sometimes the, uh, the car does is like it doesn't detect the speed limit well. Like it, the car's thinking that this current speed is 80 and it should be 80, but it actually should be 100 and it is 100. So maybe here, yeah, it picked it up. So apart from that, you, all you gotta do is enjoy the drive and relax, sit back, be ready to take over, but uh, you can listen to some tunes, enjoy your podcasts, talk to a friend, do whatever you want to do, but don't worry about the car drive because the car can take care of almost all those mundane maneuvers where you have to keep pressing on the acceleration button because the cruise control is too jerky right now the car is at 96 kilometers so I do is indicate keep holding that once the car is in this lane press the stop twice get it back on autopilot This is what actually defines and separates Teslas from any other car maker in my opinion that the autopilot is so seamless and it drives so well that it doesn't take you off the lane and then bring you in center it just keeps you almost dead center in your lane and which is quite uh, quite safe and good same thing indicate and then turn so it doesn't force you to stay in the same lane 
like if I try to do it then it just feels like this it just jerks left to right because you're actually uh, manually pushing the steering wheel on the right or left side and that's where the car lets you take control but the good part is you hear a sound that lets you know that it's off autopilot now and it's different sounds for different actions and that's quite good as well like so you would know if the car is uh, on cruise or autopilot or it's just taken off from both systems or just from cruise or autopilot so the bings and bongs that the car makes actually does have a differentiation as well and if you don't have to overtake like I can literally go to the location that I'm going by just staying in this lane and in that case you just keep uh, driving keep pushing the steering wheel just a tad bit or you can wait for the notification to say that you need to do some action or put some force on the steering wheel to let the car know that you're still paying attention but to the scenarios like this one the car can easily follow the lane and keep moving and to be honest like it does this maneuver better than most of the people can with the accuracy that it does for every turn because if you look at the car that's in front of us they were initially towards the right side of the lane more even now he's driving more towards the right side of the lane and now he's, uh, that's the thing like Tesla doesn't do it it just keeps your car in the center So that's a quick intro to show that the autopilot system is quite good. It does work in suburban environment but you have to make sure that you are in control of the vehicle by just pressing the acceleration button or paddle a bit or being ready to push the brake when you want to take over from autopilot or cruise control. But rest of the system is actually quite safe I've uh, never found myself in tricky situations where I thought it might have caused an accident apart from certain scenarios where you can see the lane markings not going straight and you still let the car being on autopilot although if there's a car in front it would still see it now the uh, speed limit is changing to 80 but the car wouldn't detect it until we reach there so in those scenarios I physically rotate this knob to actually reduce the speed you can take it uh, take the car off cruise control and re engage the cruise control or autopilot if you want to set it that way but this is the easy way of reducing the speed if needed and there's a trick to this as well like if you rotate the scroll wheel linearly then the speed goes down or up one by one but if you rotate it quickly then the increment is of five kilometer per hour speed which is good if you want to increase the speed quickly and for rest of the drive I don't think I'll need to take the car off this lane or off autopilot it does handle most of the scenarios including heavy rain quite well I've had uh, little to no experience of where the car was not able to handle the normal scenarios I just had one instance where it was raining heavy and maybe the camera in front of uh, the windscreen was dirty or something in that case car didn't allow me to put the car on autopilot or even cruise because it deemed that it's not safe to drive in that scenario and the windscreen wipers were not able to clean that uh, smudge and I was actually worried that there's something wrong with the car I might have to claim a warranty or something but uh, luckily I did some Google research and there were uh, links where it was uh, shared that you know uh, it could be the cameras that are dirty and that could cause the same situation to happen and luckily that was the case for me 
now right in front of us I know there's going to be a speed limit of 100 so in that case I can do two things one rotate this wheel or the other thing wait for the speed limit to reach 100 and then keep pressing this button down or the other way to do it is I keep pushing the accelerator until you reach 100 and then just push it once so that allows you to actually set the cruise control or autopilot on the speed that you want to go on so you can go on and accelerate more than the speed limit and push this pedal once to set the cruise control or autopilot speed to that so there's multiple ways you can handle it like the new way that I didn't know it until maybe six months back was that you can keep holding this uh, gear stop down to match the speed limit that you have your car detecting otherwise let's say the car detects the speed limit is 60 either you have to brake take the car off cruise control and then do it or press this button from 100 to 60 I would say eight times and then only you can do it but the easy way around it you keep holding this button and a knob and the car sets the cruise control to the current detected speed limit. Now I usually drive in this lane if this traffic and if it's too busy. I only overtake if there's no car right at the back of the right lane because as soon as I go there, there are people who wants to drive and uh, you know over the limit like the car was just passing us but I don't see any other cars behind us now so all I do is indicate and the car is in this lane re-engage the autopilot and we're good to go so again the speed detection is wrong it's still 100 and the car is detecting that uh, the speed limit is 80 so it's not perfect and it never have been perfect the speed limit recognition and that is actually one of the reasons for phantom braking for me personally, I've experienced that while going to Sunshine Coast, which is uh, up north from where we live, the car at a particular spot in uh, in a region was actually phantom braking because maybe the maps that were stored at that time had that speed limit to 80, but the actual speed limit of the area was 110. So it literally would slam down on brakes, and that was quite an experience uh, the first time it happened but I knew that I can push the acceleration button to keep it going and uh, it wouldn't be a safety risk for me or the person who's driving behind me but uh, it was still shocking that it just slammed on the brakes for no reason and then I realized that it could be because of that and once that happened and then again we were going the same route and it happened again then I knew that uh, that's that's the case but uh, the cars improved quite a lot, especially after the uh, Australian regulators allowed the speed recognition done by Tesla cameras to be uh, good enough for the car to detect it. Because when we got the car, the cameras were capable of recognizing the speed, but they were not doing it. Like it wasn't allowed by Tesla. And it was because of the regulations were not passed for Tesla vehicles, and that's why it wasn't allowed. Same, same like full self drive is not allowed in Australia yet and uh, this is to do with the, the regulations of Australian government or the transport authorities I believe so it was similar that uh, the cameras were not able to detect the speed limits but once that was enabled if there's a construction zone going on or anything that's happening where the speed limit changes the car usually picks up the speed limits well but you still have to be cautious and being uh, aware is the only thing that you can do. The only time I'll move away from this lane now is either the car on the left is going on 100 and traffic's moving smoothly or if there's a car who is tailgating me then I'll move back to that lane. But I won't be able to do it now because I believe there's a 
camera, uh, like speed limit camera or whatever coming and you would see the lane markings turn from dotted to solid lines which does mean that you are not legally or ideally allowed to move lanes now. And I think uh, right now it seems fine. Let's just move the lanes. And the speed limit's changing from 100 to 80. The car detected it. I was holding down this stop because I knew I need to slow down the speed and that allowed the car to slow down seamlessly. And the good part about this way is it is quite silent. So the passengers won't even know that you made the speed change because if you're dragging on the scroll wheels, it does make certain sound. But if you just keep holding the stop, then it, it, it is absolutely silent and it's uh, quite seamless. All right, I think uh, that's enough information for this video. I do love my car's autopilot and I use it as much as I can, but uh, be sure you are very familiar with the system and the things you need to do to take over when it's needed to make sure that you're safe yourself as well as you're not causing any hazards for other people uh, that you're sharing the road with.